I'm Bailey Buford. This is Stone Jack 2, John Peterson, Rachel Matiasic, Al Beck, and Rachel Peary. And we are really excited to share with you guys our final prototype. So the initial promising for our group was to develop a product that utilizes a residential fence in order to retain and reuse rainwater. So our product will do just that. It will collect rainwater from a downspout, attached to a house, pull it for you know, a couple days, and then it'll be drained out of the fence. Um, so in order to maximize innovation, we limited our constraints. We want our fence to be applicable to only residential areas and um, areas that are in semi-arid environments. Um, we want it to be achievable within the senior capstone duration and then, um, within the allocated budget of $1,200. We'd like to mention that the $1,200 goes just for our prototype or proof of concept, which you can see over there, is the 8 by 6 foot section. Um, also, we selected a semi-arid environment because we thought um, um, it would be too expensive to design for something for um, extreme temperatures and also it wouldn't be as useful for homeowners if they had to face constant freeze thaw cycles. Um, so a lot of people have asked us why not just use rain barrels. And as you can see, rain barrels are ugly and they take up a lot of space in your backyard. Um, our fence uh, looks like a normal fence and it um, gives you more space in your backyard. We went through quite a few design considerations and finally settled on this one, which we call the Lego fence design, because when you get it all together, it all just, it has snapped together assembly. So each one of those little panels in the fence is hollow, and they are all connected together by a cap that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so our design has a couple benefits over the typical rain barrels and some of the other modular rain fences on the market, um, and that's that our modular sections are a lot smaller. So most of the things that are on the, the market now are large, like eight foot sections. And this you could design to any sec uh, section that's the width of one of those panels, which is about seven inches. So that makes it more versatile. You can put it in almost any backyard. We also decided to integrate it into a stock vinyl fence that you could purchase off the shelf at a Home Depot or, or a Lowe's. Um, and the storage capacity of each one of those little panels is about one and a half gallons of water, bringing the total for the eight by six fence to 23 gallons of water. Uh, we decided uh, to piggyback off the aesthetics of a current vinyl fence. So if you come up and take a look at it later, you can barely tell that our design is even there. Um, you're storing hundreds of gallons of water and saving hundreds of dollars, and your next door neighbors may not even know. We also uh, designed a payback period calculator that took into account the square footage of your roof, the roof pitch, um, the size of your backyard, and a couple other variables, such as the cost of a typical wood fence or just a normal vinyl fence without our addition. Um, and so we used average values for San Antonio to get payback periods um, of six to 10 years versus just the regular vinyl fence and about 60 years for a wood fence. So we believe the vinyl fence is well within the lifetime of our product. And so you could recoup that, that money. Um, the other added benefit that we talked about is if you have a backyard full of our fences, it would be equivalent to having 60 rain barrels stacked up in your backyard, so it's a little bit more practical. So here's a simple illustration of how the iris fence would connect to a normal homeowner's house. Um, it's kind of hard to visualize how it is on stage. So basically the flow of water would be, if it rains, the water hits your roof, washes down to the gutters, through the house's downspout, through the first flush that river, um, through the overflow system, which is, oh here, sorry. Um, and then into the PVC water delivery pipe, which is located on top. So the first flush diverter is uh, directly connected to the downside of the house. Um, the overflow system is in between the first flush diverter and the PVC pipe, and the PVC pipe is directly on top. Um, I'll explain these three unique systems in the next few slides. So the first flush diverter reroutes the uh, built-up sediment in the first flow of water into a 3-inch diameter, 33-inch long uh, removable chamber. So once the dirty water fills up um, this tubing, uh, a ball inside rises, and once it reaches, reaches the top, it seals off the opening and allows the cleaner water to flow through. So basically, this just rids the, uh, the flow of water from the bigger sediment, like leaves or uh, rocks or like visible dirt that uh, would build up if it hasn't rained in like a couple weeks or so. Um, next, the water flows through the overflow system. So, the overflow system reroutes uh, the flow of water through a regular downspout um, to prevent the iris fence from 
like becoming too full and overflowing. So that would only happen when the water level inside the fence reaches a certain point, which is about six feet. So like the bottom of the uh, PVC pipe. Then uh, the purpose of it basically is it'll um, maintain the foundation below the IRS fence so it doesn't become damaged or, or too mushy to where it would uh, mess up the structural integrity of the fence. And then the water flows into the PVC water delivery pipe. So the PVC water delivery pipe, three inches in diameter and eight feet long, spans across the entire fence. Um, it has tubing inside the top channel, which is this part below it. <laughs> um, and it has 15 of those that uh, reroute the water to the individual panels. Um, they are sealed using PVC silicone sealant to make sure the water pipe seal and all the water that goes inside the PVC pipe uh, enters the fence. It's also capped on both ends so that um, no insects or bugs inside and contaminate the water because that will not be good. Um, and then once the water enters the fence, the connectors in the bottom of the fence allow for a uniform water level across the entire fence. So each individual panel um, has the same water level. And Rachel will talk about these connectors next. So last we presented, you're choosing between these round and rectangular connectors. Um, and these connectors acted as the Lego piece John mentioned that would connect the panels to allow even water distribution. So because of the greater flow capacity, we chose the rectangular connectors, and these are 3D printed in the first four prints, second four prints. While we were testing these connectors, we were also having issues with leaking. And so we consulted Dr. Glock, and she advised us to design caps to the bottom of each of these panels. And these are some of the prototypes of the caps. And this was an effective solution to our leaking. But in a rare moment of clarity, we decided to combine these two pieces to simplify our design. And so this piece was cleverly called the cap connector. And it also provides a watertight seal between the connector and the panels, allowing water to move through for even water distribution. Um, 3D printing has been invaluable to our project because of its quick, iterative, great pace and relative inexpensiveness. Um, and we've been using Creo, which is um, relevant to freshmen who just took that class, that is relevant software, you did learn something useful. <laughs> okay, so now that we have water flowing evenly through all the panels, we have to get it through the posts. Um, so we have, this is a cap connector, and then because of the way they're designed, we need male and female adapters, which are these pieces. Um, and then it goes into vinyl tubing and a T-joint. So the T-joint is directly inside the post, and this is coming from one section, and that's coming from another. And then um, third joint is to come out of the post to feed our pump. Um, so our post is aluminum, and then there's an, sorry, our post is vinyl, and there's an aluminum hiding inside. To get the tubing through the aluminum, we had to drill a hole, and then we also had to drill a hole through both the vinyl and the aluminum to get this tube out of the post to feed the pump. So moving on to the pump, as Rachel said, you go from the T-joint and it comes out into this tubing, into our pump, and then from the pump, it goes to the drip irrigation and then there's a spigot that you use to, ad to adapt from the pump to the drip irrigation. This is just a little irrigation line. So um, when choosing a pump, one of our main concerns is it being really loud. And also, um, some of the pumps don't run dry. So if the user forgets to turn it off and the thing keeps running, all the pumps will shut down. Or like, it's just not a good situation if you run a pump when it's dry. So this pump runs dry and it's also really quiet, which is a big plus for us. And there's a battery here because it runs on a 12 volt battery. So the way the system works is you hook up the black and the red to the, to the battery, and then here's a switch to turn it on and off. So ideally, you would have the switch on the post, and then the user would just turn on the switch, and then water would on. Um, or it would turn on the drip irrigation system. So that's a nice feature of that. And originally we went with a pump because if you didn't have a pump, the fence only provides three and a half PSI of static pressure. So the pump provides up to 35 PSI and 3.3 gallons per minute. And the drip irrigation requires 15 PSI, so it 
can adequately provide enough flow to water the lawn. So for drip irrigation, um, you don't need to have drip irrigation for your system. You could just attach a hose and water it that way. But drip irrigation is nice because it is a passive system. And this is the kit that we recommend that you buy to attach to your, your iris fence because it's pretty inexpensive and it has all those parts in it. Because I know going into Home Depot, it can be kind of intimidating to see all the different connectors and spigots and parts. You don't know what to buy. So this just has it all nice and together and great. So to test out the strength of our fence, we decided to perform a drop test. Um, we did this to determine the beams, beams that this A of the bottom material of our fence. Um, to do this, we utilized the CSI atrium with the two different balconies. So we dropped balls from a height of 14 feet 4 inches and 27 feet 9 inches. Um, as you can see, we use six different types of balls, a golf ball, a tennis ball, a baseball, a softball, a soccer ball, and a basketball. Um, and these schematics on the right hand side over here kind of show what we're doing. The weight represents the different types of balls, and the spring represents our um, panel. And we have some video footage for you guys. Uh, general aesthetics of the fence. As you can see right now, we have this huge PVC 
see I touched on top of it. Um, some possible ideas that we came up with, with maybe to uh, grow or hang flowers or something like that. And you can see right now there's also steel fasteners that are holding the PVC on the top. We're thinking maybe we could use um, better looking fasteners as you can see on the right over there. Um, second, as Ailey mentioned, the sealant that we used didn't quite cut it. Cut it. So we would recommend the 3 m Marine Adhesive Seal. It gives a better watertight seal. And um, third, we hope to apply for a patent for our cap connectors. And lastly, right now the assembly of this um, fence is projected towards people who are more interested in do-it-yourself projects. Um, we hope that in the future, if we could mass produce our fence, the co connections will be easier and it will be um, more available to homeowners. So to conclude our project, we need to make sure we met all of our constraints. So first of all, it has to fit in a residential setting, as our fence does. It is also fit for a semi-arid environment. It does not melt in Texas heat, which is like, really good. Um, it's within budget. We have $5.64 <laughs> <laughs> We use all, almost all of our money. And it is on time, because it's right here. <laughs> And I'd like to extend a thank you to all the people that helped us along the way. Dr. Enright, Chris Osig, Dr. Amy Dolly, Dr. Blah, Dr. KZ, Manuel, and Ernest. Are there any questions?
help it attach to the post. And when we were moving it, we accidentally got attached to the tab. 